first of all, thank you for doing this and congratulations in turn. You're um, welcome. You know, uh, all the credit goes to the fantastic Simpsons team members of writers, actors, producers, production people, musicians and producers and everything. I mean, so, you're you among them. I mean, that's the thing. It's such a, a well-oiled machine that I think people almost don't appreciate the amount of work that goes into it because it's been just, it's there. Like, you know, for unless you're of a certain age, it's just been there. You turn on the TV and it's there. And it's almost like just magic, like it appears. It's true. It's like a well-oiled, incredibly old machine that you keep adding new parts to and like in an old time Bugs Bunny cartoon. Yeah. I mean, it's-, it's it somehow works. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, especially, you know, Obviously, there's people who've been on, the, been on the show a long time, people who are newer, and, and there's all these different experiences because you've gotten to the point where you probably have on staff people who are fans and reference the show in conversation as opposed to people who created it. You know, you can sit there and you're planning out an episode and someone references something and you go, you know, I wrote that one. Right. That does happen. It happens sometimes. You know, <laughs> it all happens sometimes, but like, it's the, the staff is good as we have a good mix of younger people and people that have, you know, been around for a little longer. Like one of our writers, I believe her mother would watch the Simpsons when the mother was pregnant with the writer, huh. which, you know, isn't horrifying at all to hear. Well, no, it was like, yeah, it was in season 24. So she's really, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, that's the... during the old seasons. Oh yeah. But you, but you need that because, you know, the cultural touchstones change and things like that, you know, like, Behind the Laughter is such a classic episode, but if you did it now, it wouldn't work. Not that it wouldn't be funny, but just people wouldn't know what it was referencing in the same way that if you if you reference Impractical Jokers now or something like that, people know, okay, this is this is a today reference. And that's the other thing. You know, Simpsons did it first is not a joke. It's a, it's the truth. Impractical Jokers. We should just do an... <laughs> we should just do fake practical jokes on the show and not do any stories. I mean, show people reacting to it, like on uh, what's that show that is the only show on MTV now? Oh, which one? I, the hell do they do now? Is it literally the only show on MTV? It's which is one of the, it's like a video, a YouTube reaction show. Is it like right? ridiculousness or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Another Probably happier. We just did that. Probably. Simpsons, I mean, Simpsons reacting to YouTube videos. I mean, they did the, they did, you did the live thing. So like Simpsons does try stuff like that. It's not just a, an old machine. It is. It's, it's, no, it's, it's an old, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the best metaphor is. It is a. It's a, it's an old dog that does new tricks. <laughs> crazy machine. Yeah. Certainly a crazy Simpsons machine. I mean, we have a show coming up next year that is all. One, and maybe other shows have done this. So other shows, thank you for the inspiration. Huh. Yeah, but um, like it's, it's all one giant YouTube rabbit hole. Yeah. It's all from the perspective of a clicker going down a kind of Simpsons YouTube rabbit hole. And we see how the world of YouTube has kind of infected our yeah. Simpsons characters in a pretty funny way, I think. Well, that's 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 what fascinates me now is that's sort of like the behind the laughter of yeah, oh, yeah. Laugh times, right? But, yeah. How do you well that's 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 the thing that I'm I'm so curious about is maybe more so than any show, when you guys have that first meeting of the new season and there's there's literally nothing, it's just a blank canvas, you've done so much. So how do you manage to get past all the ideas like, oh that's great? Oh, that was a that was a throwaway joke twenty years ago, or we did this five years ago. There's so much that, you know, whether it's a classic episode, whether it's three weeks ago, like whatever. There's there's the A story, there's the B story, there's the little things peppered in, and it all just becomes things you can't use going forward. Or can you? Well, if it's Sideshow Bob, yes. But you know, there are certain things. I mean, certainly we've never we know we've never repeated ourselves. That's the one thing I'm a hundred percent percent positive of. We've never once repeated ourselves, but like, you know, the great challenge of the show, you're right, is fresh stories with the characters that are the same characters, you know, yeah. like, I'm not a huge stickler for canon, and maybe people don't love that, people, people, people love canon, I get it, why you love it, I don't, 
to me, the only real canon on the show is the characters themselves don't change, yeah. like who they are, what they want, what matters to them, what they're scared of, what they're proud of, you know, who they love, you know, what their flaws, their strengths, like you can't mess with that. But like, uh, you know, and I love our fans and I love it when they have strong reactions in, in, any, re in any direction. And I love it when they're apathetic, <laughs> love it all. Yeah. But like, you know, we're, we might do another show set in the world of youth hockey. And will it be, is it a different show than the Lisa on Ice show? Yeah. Yeah, it's a different emotional dynamic and with a different thing to say about youth sports and different hockey jokes. But I think, I think, I hope, I mean, you, you tell me, have we sort of earned the right to do two hockey shows out of 750? I mean, you know what the you know what the thing that that the the jump forward in time is what I think gives you the permission to keep doing it because those always work, and that could be the easiest thing to after one maybe two to go. We get it. Bart's usually a fuck up when he's a teenager or a young adult, or like Homer's just old and and the same. Like you know, you you always find a different through line to that, and right. I think anyone who pays attention realizes that that's that's how you can explore the things that people who are like oh they never change okay here's your example of them they don't change like they've ju we've just drawn them differently essentially right yeah i mean they just have to be i mean you just have to be as true to the characters as you can all the time but everything else is somewhat fungible oh yeah i guess that's know. the good thing about nfts it's taught kids what fungible means yeah the one adults know we still don't know we still don't know <laughs> Yeah, but you know, yeah, you look at at the show and the core of the characters for an entire generation and change of people has been the same. So you can't right, I mean, do almost anything with them, right? I mean, that's why for our season finale, this last season of season thirty three, we did a show that was a kind of addressed the fact that the Simpsons, as a kind of so called middle class family with a dad with a no college degree and a one blue collar job can support a family of five you know with a car and a house and all that stuff and health insurance and like that the economic reality doesn't exist anymore and it was almost a kind of a cliche or it was sort of out of date when the show premiered i was you guys even addressed it with uh with grimes two cars lobster right. yeah, like even he was yeah. apoplectic over it but he wasn't uh, yeah yes but he wasn't that wasn't a critique of capitalism yeah. that was that was just like a critique of the show yeah. <laughs> that was Frank Grimes not buying the premise of the TV show that exactly. you've been the space what well, you haven't been right <laughs> it's it works is the thing like that's that's what and it and the jokes are funny but what works are you by the characters which sounds insane considering Homer would as <laughs> even Grimes would say would have died a thousand times over in real life but you buy it as Springfield is a place where this exists and this person exists and nothing changes, but right. every week there's something different. Yeah, their their phones change. What their phones yeah. look like change. Or their TV. There's little there's little things. Um, you know, the, the video games. <laughs> we actually sort of have an episode coming up this year that it, that a little bit explains how the Simpsons have been able to get away with so many failures over the years. That I don't know, maybe that will also irritate people or delight them. irritate or delight well, or, that's, no, that's, or no reaction the three well, reactions. Yeah. they'll be they'll be all three obviously but that's the fun of of being around this long and having the the cachet or the credit or just the like you know we this is what we do you can go in that direction and go well why don't we why don't we address something we're never going to like solve someone's issue but we can do an episode on this and just Nothing have fun with the solving. idea no no solving it would, it would be so untrue to the show if you're like, oh, by the way, they're in this like weird time domain. It just doesn't work. But to right. have everyone address it totally makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's not really as much about like time paradoxes or yeah. flexible continuity as it's just about sort of where they got the money. <laughs> yeah. Which is a whole other, you know, but that's that's what also is is fun is every time you guys can reveal a new bit of backstory whether it makes sense with what's come before is is also leads to really good character moments especially when you guys have flashed back to oh, you know yeah. you know homer and marge have met several different ways over the years but it's always incredibly heartwarming right i mean the one word that i really 
doesn't factor into how we do the show is ret- retcon. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're, we've never once said, we're, this is, hey, we're changing it. This is a retcon. We've, if there's no, like, no, everything happened. It yeah. all happened. We're not undoing. We're not writing it over. We're not, this isn't Star Trek or Star Wars where everything has to fit together like a puzzle. Yeah. It's just, it all happened in this one silly world in a silly way that of course doesn't make sense, but it's silly. But like, please fans, beloved fans, there's no retcon because we're not changing the past. We're yeah. just saying it's, it's deliciously con- contradictory. I mean, you should, you should just, next time you guys win an Emmy, just bring them all up on stage and go, look, these are all different ones. It's not one Emmy that we're just tr- uh, passing along. We keep doing it. It's not it's continuity. Uh, but it's true. It's, it's funny to see how people can get obsessed over that stuff. And, and it's sort of hypocritical in a way. Not that loving something and having opinions is bad, but... Yeah, go for it. Can, Better than can, nothing, I guess. Yeah, but they can love, or I can love, you know, Scorpio taking over the East Coast and it's never addressed again. But right. they go to the East Coast and it's not run by Hank Scorpio. You know, you, you accept enough. It's just weird that sometimes there's things that go, well, I can't accept that. Because yeah. they are animated. There are cartoon characters. For one wild and wacky weekend, Scorpio was the bad guy of the Simpsons movie. Yeah. That, I remember the days of reading IMDb about that. And it was like, remember we did a big Scorpio rewrite. And everyone kind of read it over the weekend and thought, well, this creates a million more problems than it solves. And so yeah. we un scorpioed it. Which also, is- we, didn't, we didn't think Albert wanted to re-Scorpio. No, I think I think I'm sure he got more out of doing a new character and getting to do the the government satire. Yes, the government satire. Yeah, which is that's a whole other world of the like what the movie was going to be about. Then seeing it, then oh, so you guys are going to do a next one, and then everyone just shoots themselves in the head as soon as they hear that. <laughs> I mean, we could do another one. Yeah, possible. I imagine it's it out. Yeah, I imagine at some point it'll happen, but. It was just funny to see the articles like the day it opened. Oh, it's a hit. So they're going to make another one. You guys go, you guys know how long this took. We're also making the show. We also like sleeping and seeing our spouses. 100% agree. I mean, also I try to, I don't always succeed at this or, but like I try to think that the plot of every episode should feel kind of like a movie Yeah. in that something epic and, crazy and visual and life-changing sort of happens to the characters and like like if you're trying to think of what makes a good simpsons episode like you just this sounds a little crass or cynical but like what's the movie poster of this episode and that's what gives it identity and just distinctiveness and point of view oh yeah episodes like i there are other animated shows that exist where sometimes i feel the episodes aren't as distinct from one another yeah uh, which which of course is impossible to achieve all the time but no but that's you know that's, everyone's good with it yeah everyone's great. everyone's great is what i'm saying yeah well i mean you would hope at this point especially longevity breeds hopefully the ability to know longevity, how to do it longevity breeds contempt well there's that too but uh, but I mean, you guys have even had episodes I remember reading over the years that have been like, do we hold this one? Because maybe this is a movie. You know, that's a conversation that that can happen. That's a sign of, OK, we're doing something right. If if we yeah. see like 90 minute potential in this 22 minute premise. I'm always a little afraid that every really good table read might get yanked and turned into a movie. Yeah. But then <laughs> I'm just happy to do the show. Yeah. Which is yeah. Like the movie was fun. The movie was great, but it's a different storytelling energy in a movie yeah. and a different interaction with the audience. And it's just, it's more fun to do a TV show, I think, 100%. than to have to have the pressures of keeping an audience laughing and caring and crying and understanding all the time. Yeah. The, yeah. There's a one off event. It was great as a like, oh, the movie. Because it's also just such a, a Bob's thing. Burgers movie was great. Yeah. I loved it. They did a great job. Kudos to them. Oh, yeah. Um, I bet they're not rushing to do another one. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're like, thank you. We'll we'll talk to you when we have another idea that we want to do. Uh, but that's that's the thing. You know, anything that makes something 
good or work, people, you know, the people who write the checks want more of. And it's your guy's job to figure out the way to make that creative. But it doesn't always merge in that way. When you guys are sitting there thinking of the next season or, you know, wrapping up the last season, you're not necessarily worrying about, oh, this is going to be the hit episode. It's like, one, do we find this funny? Because that's right. nothing starts if you don't find it funny. Sure. And, you know, we are a, an old show, as we've talked about. But, you know, we, we have to make 22 a year, which means, you're, you know, most of the great new modern shows, they write them all. Yep. They shoot them. They stop writing. They film them all. Then they stop filming. Then they edit them all. Then they stop editing. Then they go write a little more, shoot a little more, edit a little more. So it's this crafted eight or 10 or six episode. Well, sometimes it's like a mini movie. Yeah. You know, or a maxi movie, I guess. And, you know, that's not our creative mission to like be able to like craft one season of experience. It's really just like, we need to make sure that every episode is its own movie and uses and over the course of the season, at least we're using all the characters well, like maybe there's an episode where Bart isn't super heavy mm -hmm. or that Harry Shearer's characters aren't super represented, but then we do a, you know, a two-parter that's all about, you know, a Flanders Fargo crime parody. And, <laughs> you know, Flanders is the main, by far the main character of that. Yeah. Bart and Lisa are barely in it, but they're the stars of other things. So as long as it sort of evens out over the season, I think it's okay. And also having the cast of characters that you can pull from. There is an appeal to like, you know who we haven't done? We haven't done a Barney episode in a long time. We haven't done this guy in a long time. And that could open up a whole bunch of fresh ideas of just, oh, we haven't thought about this character sure. beyond. Sure. I know I want this joke from this character at some point in this episode. So when you, you know, you can make one around them, that leads to a lot of opportunity. The same way that I think just anything you guys have done largely works because there's such a handle on the characters, even the, the video games, which are the easiest way to forget about the characters have really good moments of just like, I forget I which one, like the video games, Marge hoping I hope someone kills that man. Like just what, a, what an out of context line in a game, but it's such a Marge line. And that's so easy to, to lose if you're not <laughs> this kind of group. And I think that's it's why it's freeing, freeing to write the video games. Cause you do a little bit, it could be a little darker and weirder and self-indulgent oh, yeah. than the show, which has more emotional needs, more emotional reality. You know, <laughs> discipline requires a disciplined emotional reality. Oh yeah. Video, I mean, like if you someone put together a book of all the insane conversations that take place in that Simpsons tapped out game, yeah. of which has already now been around for 10 years and has made probably billions of dollars came so close to getting my money so many times oh donut currency yeah oh uh, no i was the guy and who was making up writing in that game it is no one ever thought that game they thought that oh we'll just do a rip off of this smurfs totally. you know town building game and it'll be around for two years we'll make a quick buck no one gets hurt instead it just keeps growing and people keep spending yeah and the towns are so big it's crazy well it's because you've built such a world that people enjoy that you like wait i can get the elevator to the staircase to no the escalator to nowhere like of course i want that you just and that's a thing that nobody when when that joke popped up the first time thought would ever be referenced again I think but we're bringing back the staircase to nowhere nice I, well, uh, we have, we have a, I'll say this. We have a, one of our, th we have, well, okay, I'll say a couple of things. Coming sure. up in the fall, we have two Halloween episodes. Nice. Instead of one. But one is a single story, a single horror story. And one is the typical yeah. treehouse of horror with three stories. And one of the three stories goes sort of deep into classic simpsons references for sure excellent i mean we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, comic-con we'll talk more about that at comic-con yeah i mean listen you guys are almost 100 emmy nominations in at this point something is working so 
when well you know what's what's working you know it's like to me it's just the characters are working and the world is working and the animation is working the writers and the work the musicians are everyone's we're all working oh yeah i mean that's that's actually kind of a, a good way to to wrap it up is because sure. i think the the writing is is so good because the characters are so good and the characters are so good because the writing is so good it's not a thing where i feel like you could just put anyone in the chair and go write a write a marge joke right and and it would work i mean you know what would happen is some things would work because she's just so well known of a character that you'd stumble into it and like the you know 100 monkeys writing writing on typewriters you get shakespeare but sure. to get 22 episodes with six to 12 solid marge jokes an episode like that's there's talent involved there so like i'm not spoil i'm not saying anything you don't know but you guys are sure. Kind of masters. Well, now the world, well, now the world knows. Well, that is, like, that is part of the know, game. And, you know, it's just if, if the audience cares about the characters, they're much more likely to laugh with them, at them, yeah. against them, despite them. You know, they're so much more willing to laugh if they care about who they are and what they want and what matters to them. And if you, that's you know, that's like the DNA of the show. Yep. is that character stuff of like the pathos of human existence on these kind of somewhat archetypical but also very specific at the same time family oh yeah the probably the the most emotional moment i've seen on television in my life remains seeing the do it for her corkboard at the end of an episode and that's only because you care about these characters and you've gone you believe that this guy would do this job for this reason and that's it and it's it works like that's it sounds like you're underselling it but it's just it's the answer is like it works <laughs> i'm just trying to regular sell it yeah well that's true i don't know i don't know what the right amount of selling is <laughs> well i mean i think i think you guys have consistently found it and i think you know how many emmy how many emmys that are that are coming your way and continue to come your way are a good uh you know, it's not the okay. reason, but it's also well, a good everyone brand. loves everyone loves Emmys, but yeah, you know, you know, you know, it's a certain like in, internal barometer of <laughs> of self satisfaction, like Ed oh. Begley's famous go kart, yep. powered by his own sense of self satisfaction. Um, oh yeah, the know. day after the nominations, you guys are all driving in that little car, We're all driving those go karts, right? <laughs> right, but six months later, then you're like, oh, we gotta we gotta be geniuses again. Hang Ed on. Daly said that's his favorite line of his he's ever spoken. I'm just gonna say. I mean, I, it's it's, not, I, I, to, I not to toot our own Begley horn, of course. No. It was go, funny. Go card horn. Oh yeah. It was funny before people knew why it was funny when it was just, oh, <laughs> that guy's saying something funny. And then the more you realize <laughs> you go, oh, that joke has layers. Shit. Definitely uh, layers. It's great. And well, we'll Thank you so much for doing this. Sure. Well, I, I hope this has been totally no. I could I could literally mock you about this all day. This is yeah. this is the equivalent of like going on a date with me. There's a lot of Simpsons references. Very exciting. No, no, I haven't been on any dates in a while, so it feels good to get back in the game. Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay, unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm back in the game, so it's not. Well, you're gonna do great. No, you're gonna do great. We'll, we'll see. I feel uh, no. You're gonna really. You're gonna. You're gonna light it up. Fingers crossed. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this and, and best yeah, of luck. Yeah. I look forward to seeing, you know, the seventh, okay. eighth, ninth, tenth Emmy come your way. Well, keep, you know, Emmys are nice, but it's just everyone keep watching. Keep watching the show. There's some crazy stuff coming up in the fall. I mean, two Halloweens, what more need I say? All right. Well, All right. Awesome. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Bye bye. Take care.